In this video, we will take a look at basic concept about study design and basic consideration we should have. Study design, or it should be, it should be a discussion which involves all the parties in a project. It should have a biological question. It should determine what the most appropriate analysis has to be done. It should determine what the necessary sample size is that would give us enough statistical power to obtain a valid answer. And of course, it should be done prior to conducting any of the experiments. As an example of this should proceed, imagine that we have a question, which is, are there genes responsible for sexual dimorphism in Populus tremula? Here, dimorphism is, for example, O, the tree, as the Aspen tree Populus tremula will use its resources differently based on its sex. You could imagine that a male tree would like to grow bigger so that he can spread his pollen further away, whereas a female tree would like to have stronger defenses so that she can protect herself and her progeny. Now, the next question when we think about study design is which method is or are most appropriate to study gene expression genome-wide? That's the first question. The second question is which and how many samples do we need? Here, yeah. knowing that we are looking at a trait that might involve many genes among the 40,000 that are found in the Populus tremula genome, how many samples do we require? Do we require few samples or do we rather require many samples? The first answer to a first question is that obviously we want to compare male with female. So what we are looking at is conducting a differential expression analysis. Nowadays, this type of analysis is commonly done using a high throughput sequencing method called RNA sequencing or in short, RNA-seq. This answer actually raises a new question. Because we are doing sequencing, how deep should every sample be sequenced to capture changes in expression of the genes that might be related to the difference between male and female in a significantly reliable fashion? We will look into that in the next slide, but now talking about our question number two from before, which on how many samples do we need? An answer is to decide how many genes are responsible for sexual dimorphism in Aspen. Are there a lot? Are there few? Well, talking to the biologist, we know that it likely involves few loci, if that process is regulated at all at the messenger RNA level. So we know that we have few genes that might be significantly differentially expressed between the two conditions. Based on that information, how many replicates, technical or biological, do we need to have? How variable is the actual sequencing procedure? If a variable, if a sequencing technique is highly variable, like microarray where, then we probably need to have more technical replicate because we need to measure the effect of the technology on our result. If the sequencing technology is extremely reproducible, then we may favor to generate biological replicate instead of a technical replicate. Talking about biological replicate, all variable is the actual biological trait that we are investigating. Is it very variable? Is it very specific? This will influence how much or many sample we want to use. Going back again, in this discussion between the different parties involved, we had this answer question about, okay, we need to do a differential expression analysis, but how deep should we sequence the sample? 
And the first answer there is the bioinformatician says, well, we commonly use 20 million reads, and this is an appropriate depth for us to screen for low express genes without being affected by noise. So we have a good noise or signal to noise ratio. The noise could be technical, such as sequencing errors, or biological, such as stochastic expression. Furthermore, the statistician suggests methods that have a good true positive rate and a low false positive rate, so that the results we get are trustable. For the second question that we had before, which was how many replicate do we need and what type of replicate do we need? The statistician says that we need as many as replicate as possible. The bioinformatician says the biological replicate should be favored over the technical replicates because we know that high throughput sequencing, the technology itself is extremely highly reproducible. So technical replicates would be almost identical. Finally, the statistician warns us about the sensitivity and power issue, telling us that we need to be aware that if we are looking for a gene that is lowly expressed, then we need to sequence deep enough so that we can pick up enough reads so that we can confidently decide whether that read, the gene, is differentially expressed between the male and the female. Altogether, this discussion led us to design a study in the following. Using RNA-seq with a high depth of sequencing, with as many biological replicates as possible, to perform a differential expression analysis between the male and the female trees, using appropriate statistical models. Here you can see I mentioned that as many biological as replicates, money affording, money is always a limiting factor. But rather than sequencing samples deeper, it is often more um, profitable to actually sequence more biological replicates. And the second aspect here is the use of appropriate statistical model. In the literature, you will hear very often about FPKM, fragment per kilo base reads per million reads in a library. Actually, fragment per kilo base of transcript per million reads in the library. And this is a very uh, used metric, so to say, for RNA-seq expression. But it has been proved in the last couple of years that it is by far not the most accurate. So you might find a lot of literature talking about it, but there is more and more evidence that there are better methods. So for such as example, a method using a model called negative binomial, which we'll, we'll discuss later on in a different lecture. So as a summary, when we talk about design and study design, how do we take the decision? Well, it has to be a balance between the number of samples, the number of conditions, the number of replicates, and of course, because science is publicly funded, most of the time, a limiting factor will always be the money. 